When you have a man with drive and direction, a man really going someplace, people notice it. And some of those people might try to change his direction to somewhere he should not go. So do you think that with such a calling as we know that Jack had, the devil wouldn't have taken notice and tried to derail him? Wait till you find out some of the things the devil tried to do against him. Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. Jack told me that when he was a teenager, his Catholic aunt who hated him pressured him to see a fortune teller. When he went in, the lady said she could see books, lots of books around Jack. She said he would be a famous author and his books would go all over the world. I remind you that teenager Jack wasn't a writer. He was an artist and a budding actor. Maybe devils can detect things about a person. They've been around about 6,000 years. Maybe there's something they can see in the spirit realm. I don't know, but the devil somehow saw an inkling of Jack's destiny and his minions acted upon that tip. So Jack went on to start acting school in 1942, get drafted into the military in February 1943, finish acting school in 1948, get married to Lola Lynn late March, and by that fall, leave the whole Hollywood career behind. Then for about the next three, four years, he worked for his dad at his sign painting company. But his direction in his life never left him, not even in the midst of another job. In the uh, July 1949 issue of The American Cartoonist, Jack got his comic printed on the back cover. Take a look. A poor artist draws a track with a wall full of rejection notices behind him. Then he goes to the mailbox to put in his latest work. But in a stroke of irony, a mail truck speeds past him, hitting him. Then we see an editor who loves the work, and in the last frame, a postman walks away from a grave, and the artist, with joy, holds the acceptance letter in his hand as a ghost. He was finally recognized after he had died. Jack's 1949 comic illustrated an important truth. It's very hard to make a living drawing comics. Jack still needed a day job. So in 1953, Jack got a job doing advertise, advertising art and other graphic work for Aerojet General Corporation, an aerospace company in Azusa, about 20 miles northeast of Los Angeles. This was his ID card. Aerojet created rocket engines and greatly assisted in World War II by the invention of the Jato engine, jet-assisted takeoff. These are some of the advertising mock-ups Jack made for the Jato rocket to sell the idea to various government buyers. Too early for Jato, showing historical attempts at flying too early for a rocket engine for takeoff. But Jack didn't think only of his day job and his family. He still wanted to draw comic art. He'd already approached Coca-Cola with an entire advertising idea, Coke around the world. He showed people in different countries drinking Coke with their own unique culture. After they watched his presentation, one of them said to Jack, you're 10 years too early. We're not ready for that yet. Jack was ahead of his time a lot. That stayed a pattern in Jack's life. A few years later, Jack told me Coke acted on his idea, but Jack didn't get any credit when they finally did it. In the meantime, he kept trying out new ideas. In late 1952, early 1953, Jack had floated a new idea to the Mirror Enterprises Syndicate of Los Angeles, now called Times Mirror. His concept? To create a comic panel mirroring modern life, but in the costumes and settings of cavemen. Jack called it, Times Have Changed? Mirror Enterprises Syndicate bought the idea, but they wanted a daily comic Monday to Friday with a large multi-panel color comic on Sundays, starting in the summer of 1953. For a big job like this, they wanted an ideas man who would feed new ideas and text to Jack, so Jack 
could focus on drawing them for six days a week. Enter Bill Clayton. Whether Jack met Bill earlier and he was Jack's contact at the mirror, or whether the mirror recommended Bill to Jack, I don't really know. But either way, the two of them were joined together. But Jack was the only Christian. So the advertising didn't go the way Jack would have written it at all. Listen to this. Have you ever said, boy, times have really changed? Well, we have news for you. Times haven't changed as much as you may think they have, and if you don't believe us, just ask Bill Clayton and Jack Chick. Through the use of an old cracked crystal ball and Ouija board left over from last Christmas, a dash of magic and a lot of imagination, these boys have been able to go back to the days of the caveman. And what did Clayton and Chick find when they turned back the clock over a million years? Well, they found out that things were a lot like they are today. This might sound hard to believe, but it's true. To prove their point, Clayton and Chick have recorded all of the things they found when they returned to the caveman world. And starting next Monday, the new panel feature called Times Have Changed, you'll be able to share the fun that happened when Mother Earth was a baby. To quote Fred Flintstone, oh boy. Oh, and speaking of that, here's the main character, Glugford. That's Glugford. Almost like Alfred. Almost like Fred. And this is Ermac. Almost like Irma. Almost like Wilma. It was a completely new idea. A modern Stone Age family. And Jack's art sold the idea. Listen to this ad the Mirror sent to other newspapers. Times Have Changed is the first really different panel to come along in years. More than 40 leading papers bought it on site on the basis of a few proofs and well ahead of first publication. Times Have Changed goes back to the first principles of cartooning. It integrates the caption with the drawing. Every situation will strike home every day to every reader because it's one he will instantly recognize. One of the things that makes Times of Change so different is the wonderful backgrounds and the minor characters who people the panel. They give the reader a further series of chuckles after the initial impact of the caption. The strip was a huge success, but Jack still had his day job. That December, Jack drew a Christmas card for the guys at Aerojet. That's boss Bill Taft as Scrooge, and Bill King and Kenny Seaman, and some dog. Yes, that was the first appearance of fame, December 24th, 1953, who's been hiding somewhere in most of Jack's chick tracks. In 1954, things changed. It turns out that Bill Clayton was a Roman Catholic. He gave in to temptation. He didn't have the indwelling Holy Spirit to stop him. So he went on the town and enjoyed his fame instead of doing the hard work of coming up with ideas for Jack to draw in the panel. He left Jack to do everything himself. But Jack still had his day job. By day, Jack was working at Aerojet. Long, hard hours sometimes following blueprints for government projects, and sometimes coming up with advertising all on his own. And by night, he wasn't relaxing and drawing new panels. No, he had to come up with all new ideas by himself and compose how they look, then draw them. That consumed both his nights and his weekends. Jack was unequally yoked and in over his head. He was working to take care of his family. His wife was starting to be sick. He had a two-year-old daughter. Something had to change. So in early 1954, Jack took readers' submitted ideas for panels and then gave them credit. Here's May 5th, 1954. 
Here's June 24th. And here is July 14th. Finally, Jack had it. He went to the mirror and said, I have to break my contract. I can't keep doing the work myself. But the executives at the mirror said, if you break your contract, Jack, you will never get a syndicated comic again. Well, something was about to break. Either Jack or the contract. Jack broke the contract. That was the sad ending of being unequally yoked. The ad copy was unchristian, and his unsaved partner didn't have a relationship with the father through faith in Christ to keep him from danger. When Bill Clayton didn't pull his weight, the partnership couldn't take the strain, and finally <laughs> fell apart. Jack learned a valuable lesson, 2 Corinthians 6.14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with with darkness. If Jack were going to make comics, he'd have to do it himself or with a reliable Christian partner. Next, you're going to see how God used all of Jack's life lessons and some Chinese comic books to bring Jack to the next stage in his life. Until then, God bless you and have a wonderful day.